Welcome to Chemistry 1152 Supplemental Instruction. As we have discussed in our first lecture, organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon and only a few other elements from the periodic chart. Chiefly, we will study compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Some substances also will contain halogen as chlorine, and bromine, some others will contain sulfur and phosphorus. There are some important facts that we need to recall about carbon. For example, we can look at carbon atomic number and it is uh, atomic number is six. It has six electrons and six protons and depending on the number of neutrons, carbon will have three isotopes. It has the isotope 12 with the um, most abundant in nature exists as a 99%. Also we can look at carbon uh, Lewis structure. It shows four outermost valence shell electrons that can combine to make chemical bonds. In this example we are using four atoms of hydrogen to make a simple compound that we call and we know as methane. The Lewis structure of carbon is showing four electrons but it can make single bonds and it can also make double bonds and triple bond. We can distinguish organic compounds from inorganic compounds by exploring some of the properties. For organic compounds such as methane, it is organic because it contains only carbon and hydrogen. The molecule of benzene, which contains only carbon and hydrogen. This is an alcohol. These are organic compounds. And among the properties of these kind of substances, the majority of organic compounds, aqueous solution, do not conduct electricity. Most of them, as organic compounds, are not water-soluble. Most of the chemical bonds are covalent. The reactions of organic compounds are very slow, and almost all of them burn. When it comes to inorganic compounds, we know that most of the bonds in inorganic compounds are ionic. We have an example here sodium chloride, it has sodium, which is a metal, and chlorine, that is a non-metal. This is using ionic bond, no covalent bond. Very few of inorganic compounds will burn. Almost all inorganic substances are insoluble in organic solvents. Many of the inorganic compounds are water-soluble. And the reactions of inorganic compounds are very fast. We know hydrocarbons are very important to us. Hydrocarbons are compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen. We use hydrocarbons as fuels. Petroleum oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons and it is the source to produce gasoline. But we also need to pay attention to other elements important in organic chemistry. For example, we also have substances that contain nitrogen and phosphorus. So we have, in nitrogen has the capability of formation of three bonds. So you see in here, three single bonds and one lone pair. Phosphorus is also very important has three bonds and one set of lone pairs, oxygen and sulfur. We should not forget those set of lone pairs. In some occasions, we will see oxygen forming carbon single bond with oxygen, and we see a set of lone pair, like in the family of alcohols. And we also will see that carbon can make a carbon-oxygen double bond, keeping a set of lone pair. There is what is called bond polarity. 
between carbon and oxygen due to the difference in electronegativity values between carbon and oxygen. When it comes to the family of hydrocarbons, we have a classification and a subdivision. In this classification, we have the saturated compounds, and that is the family that contains single bonds only, carbon-carbon single bonds or saturated compounds, and we also have the family of unsaturated compounds. That means that these substances will have multiple bonds that can be carbon-carbon double bond, it could be carbon-carbon triple bond, or it could be an aromatic compound or what we call the family of arenes. In this family, it's important to understand that these bonds are all equivalent. There is not a double bond, there is not a single bond. All of these bonds are identical. When it comes to the family of of saturated compounds, carbon-carbon single bonds, we divide this between the aliphatic, that means that they are going to be open chain, like you see here, a chain of carbons, or they can be, they can form a ring. That is forming what we call cyclic alkanes or cycloalkanes. For those aliphatic of open chain, we have the straight chain or those that can be forming a branch. This is a branched alkane and this is a straight chain alkane.